Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, however, however you are experiencing us. We'd like to welcome you to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, our online service. Again, it's an honor that we can share this time together in worship. Let's take a moment to center ourselves in the presence of God, wherever you are, and just take a few moments to sit down, step a little straighter, take some deep breaths, and be present. Set aside the things that we've brought to worship, the things we're thinking about in the future, the things we're considering from the past. And just let those be for now as we worship God. We're going to pray our Thanksgiving from the font. As you see, I'm next to the Thanksgiving in the font. And it's exactly that, where we are remembering and praising and glorifying the gift of water, the gift of baptism, remembering our scriptural stories of water, the gift of baptism in Jesus Christ. Let's pray together our thanksgiving at the font. We praise you, O God, for water, the rain that nourishes animals and plants, the water for drinking and bathing. We We praise praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for our water stories, a flood that cleansed the earth, the sea that drowned the enemy, a river that healed leprosy. We praise you, O God, for water. We remember the waters of Jesus, baptized in the Jordan River, calming the Sea of Galilee, drinking from Jacob's well, healing at the pool of Bethesda, washing disciples' feet. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for this font, for you breathe into this water and wash away our sin and birth us each day into your peace and joy. We praise you, O God, for baptism. O God, you are the ocean, sustaining this earth. O God, you are the river, saving us from death. O God, you are the fountain, granting us health and well-being. We praise you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen and amen. Grace for Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
the day. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. This reading comes to us from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 through 5, and it's an invitation to eat and drink that which truly satisfies. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's reading is from Romans 9, beginning with the first verse. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all God-blessed forever. Amen. Friends, our gospel reading is from St. Matthew, and it's chapter 14. It's going to be verses 13 through 20. It is the very well-known passage of the feeding of the 5,000. Let's listen to God's word. And when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. When the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. And Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and two fish. He looked up to heaven, blessed, broke the loaves, gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate, and all were filled. And he took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 people, besides women, and children. My friends, the grass withers and the flower fades. The word of God endures forever. Amen. Hi, boys and girls. We miss you at Good Shepherd. You can see I'm in the sanctuary, saying next to the baptismal font, there's this passage. It's in the New Testament, and it is about Jesus. He's out on a boat. He's with his disciples. A bunch of waves come up. It gets pretty scary. And Jesus walks out onto the water and the disciples get scared and they think it's a ghost. And then Jesus invites them to come out and Peter gets out of the boat 
And he walks out toward Jesus and then he starts to look around and he gets scared and he starts to sink. And it's, it's an important reading because it's about we all get scared. Do you ever get scared? Sometimes maybe at night or some, you, know, you might be by yourself or something might happen. You might see a movie. Something can come up that, that makes you scared. All of us get scared. Grown-ups get scared. And I'm standing next to this font because it's about water. So I've got my hand in the water right now, as you can see. And there's these themes of water that are throughout all the Bible. Um, and this is one more passage. So it's on the water. And the water is going to be this place where Peter walks out. And it's going to be the saving place for him. <clears throat> and he's going to test his faith. And it's, it's important. And I think for us to you know, feel this water and be, be reminded of that, that in this water here, this, in our baptismal water, that we, are, we can be restored in that. And just even touching it is, is very calming. And it's a place that we can trust in Jesus. We can trust in God, even when we do get scared. And Peter gets really scared. And you know what? He should be scared. If it were me, I would be scared too. If it were you out in that water, I would be scared for you too. So being scared is natural. And it's a place that we can go to to go when we get scared, it's okay. And when we do get scared, we can turn to Jesus, we can turn to God, and we can pray. It's in those places of fear that we're saying, God, help me, please, my life is open to you. And so it's a prayer that all of us can do at different times of our life, no matter what age we are. All of us are gonna get scared sometime. And it's in that place of being scared that we can turn to God. And it's the water, which is a, a place they use throughout all the Bible. It's a place of being restored, renewed. It's a place where ultimately we get kind of scared. And all these stories in the Bible, there's a lot of water and there's a lot of stuff that makes us afraid. However, out of all, all of that is a God who brings us home, who calls us home. We miss you, Good Shepherd, and we love you. Amen. Friends. Please pray with me. Loving God, may the meditation of all of our hearts, our word read and proclaimed, our song sung, our prayers prayed, our fellowship, restore us, renew us, and make us new in you. Amen. This is a very well-known passage, the feeding of the 5,000. It's so well-known that it's one of the only ones that is in all four gospel accounts. And it was a, an important passage for the early church around, I think, just that, of what the power of, of hope and inspiration, um, some of these multitudes being fed. So a very powerful passage. It's, it's, I think it's timely for us to, to look at this in our, our world today. Something that is, is in this, it has some, you know, some rich theological themes that if we didn't hear it, we can, we can feel it. And it's, it's when Jesus, you know, we have communion and we invite people to the table. And, and I tell people that all are welcome to the table, no matter where you're born, how much money you make or who you love, you can come to the table. And in this passage, Jesus takes the bread and uses the language that's ultimately gonna be what we use for communion. He's gonna take the bread, he's going to lift it up to heaven, He's going to bless it, he breaks it, he gives it. And it's in this experience that we're seeing something holy happen, happening. And what happens here, this has been looked at in a lot of different ways. Metaphorically, uh, it represents something else about sharing and nothing wrong with that and everything right about it. However, for the gospel writers to include this, it's exactly what it is. It's a God thing. A God thing happened on these hills in Galilee. 
something miraculous happened. And all these people were fed. And that is a message for all of us today in the same way, that in a miraculous way, we are fed, we are nurtured, we are restored. And it's important because many of us are going through hardships and changes, struggles and loss in a variety of different ways. And like the early church that read this passage frequently because they needed to be reminded of inspiration and hope and abundance. And these themes are the very fabric of the gospel message. And so too are we today to be reminded of those themes of inspiration, of hope and abundance. That when it all seems like not possible, that God can create possible. God can create a way when there is, seems to be no way. And it's important for us now, because many of us have some deep feelings with all the shifts and changes that are going uh, on in our life, and they're kind of too numerous to name. But you know what they are in the world. You know what they are in your life and your community. You know exactly what they are. And it's in this passage that we're inviting God into those places those impossible places to say, create a way when there doesn't seem to be a way. And sometimes it can be a new way of thinking, a new way of believing, a new way of behaving and seeing the world. It isn't necessarily going to be your, your wish might, might be granted. I hope that happens and sometimes it doesn't. But if it doesn't, sometimes the way we see it and feel it and understand it, and we can live out into our lives and into the future. That's where we have these deep adaptive changes in our life. And I believe that is what's happening in this scripture reading of the loaves and the fishes in this God thing that happens in Galilee, that people are suddenly restored and renewed as Jesus takes the bread and blesses it and breaks it and gives, and we have this language of, of restoration, of renewal, of hope. And it's something that each of you take some time during this week and reread this passage from Matthew. Matthew 14, verses 13 through 20, 21, and read these and see them for what they are as a God thing that we can invite God into those very places of our life where we need to find a way when there seems to be no way. My friends, may it be so for each of you and also very much for me. Amen.
friends, let's come together in prayer. We lift up some prayers for people in our congregation, prayers of healing for Dave Parati, for Helga May, for Selby Hull, for Trish Hader. Also, we'd like to lift up prayers of resurrection for Shirley Border, a longtime member of our church, and prayers for her children, for Cheryl and Denise and Dennis and Doug. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies. Provide needed rains in places of drought. Protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, and soul, and mind, especially those that we name now. Lord, in your mercy, you offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, we gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known especially those that we name now. Lord, in your mercy. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, let's turn to one another and pass the peace of Christ and say God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it.
Friends, this is a time in our worship where we gather for communion. If you are at home and you'd like to get some wine or juice, some bread, a cracker, a bagel, and prepare our hearts for communion. When our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Friends, this is the most generous invitation that we can make. People will come from the east and the west, the north and the south. They'll come from Petaluma and Sonoma and San Rafael and Novato to sit at the table of the kingdom of God. As I said, this is the most generous invitation that we can make and all can come to this table, no matter where you were born, how much money you make or who you love. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Let us pray. It's truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. O oh God, you made us in your image, called us to be your people, to love and serve you and your creation. When we turn from you, you did not turn from us. You spoke to us through prophets who looked for that day when justice shall triumph and peace shall reign over all the earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with all the faithful of every time and every place. Let's continue to pray. Remembering all your merciful acts, we take this bread and this cup and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that this bread and this cup may be the communion with Christ. Now we pray the perfect prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When our Lord was with the disciples at the table, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same way he took the cup and poured it and said, this is a new covenant that's sealed in my blood. It's shed for the forgiveness of sins. And every time you drink from this cup, you eat from this loaf, you will proclaim the living Lord. My friends, these are the gifts of God and all of you are the people of God. Amen. Friends, let's pray together. Gracious God, you have fed us with the bread of life, renewed us for your service. Help us to be faithful disciples of Christ so that our daily living may be part of the life of your kingdom. And our love be your love, reaching out to the life of the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Friends, let's go out into today, into this week, into this life, and go with God's grace and know that we have but little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. Oh, be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. Let us all go in peace. Amen.